how the National Institutes of Health defines health disparities. A few terms that may be helpful to review. Incidence is the occurrence, rate, or frequency of a disease, crime, or something else undesirable. Prevalence is the proportion of a population affected by a disease at a specific time, expressed as a percentage. So the National Institute of Health, NIH, defines health disparities as differences in the incidence, prevalence, mortality, and burden of diseases and other adverse health conditions that exist among specific population groups in the United States. The quote on this slide highlights the situation of minority children and their families. According to the Minnesota Department of Health, Minnesota on average ranks among the healthiest states in the nation. In Minnesota, we also have some of the greatest health disparities in the country between Caucasians and people of color. Let's look at some of these disparities. Disparity ratios are calculated by dividing the rate for the population, rate A, by the best rate, rate B, for a selected health indicator to determine how much more likely a particular event is to occur in a population compared to another population. In this report, the best rate is the lowest rate among African Americans, American Indians, Asians, Hispanics, and whites for each indicator. Minnesota Department of Health calculated disparities for 17 indicators. I'd encourage you to examine one of these disparities and think for yourself, why might this health disparity exist in Minnesota? Why should it matter to me that this health disparity even exists? How does my faith belief system influence my beliefs about health disparities? The Minnesota Department of Health report concluded that Minnesota's significant and long-lasting health inequities cannot be explained by biogenetic factors and personal choices alone. These health differences have, in part, resulted from structural racism, which refers to racism that is built into systems and policies rather than just individual prejudice. Creating health equity requires comprehensive solutions that include, but go beyond, targeted grants and access to health care. Minnesota needs to address health disparities as part of a broad spectrum of public investments in housing, transportation, education, economic opportunity, and criminal justice. In earlier periods of American history, and in other countries too, it was believed that some racial and ethnic groups were biologically inferior. Our current knowledge about genetics disproves that belief. Public health and medical experts now recognize that health disparities are more related to zip code than genetic code. Remember what the Minnesota Department of Health study concluded. Minnesota's significant and long-lasting health inequities cannot be explained by biogenetic factors and personal choices alone. Factors which contribute to health disparities include lack of access to healthy food as well as the time and the knowledge to cook with it, children being unable to play outside because it's not safe or that they live in places without a playground nearby not having access to health care, or the inability to get to a facility by not having a vehicle or other means of reliable transportation to get to a clinic appointment. Advertisers change advertisements for unhealthy foods in certain areas in order to increase consumption by their target market. Lack of education about options for health, healthy eating, and behaviors. And finally, high rates of unemployment and crime. You'll recall that we've discussed the effects of social determinants of health. Scientists are also learning about the complex relationship between our environment and our genes. For example, after World War II, by the time the Netherlands was liberated in May of 1945, more than 20,000 people had died from starvation. Pregnant women, it turns out, were uniquely vulnerable and the children they gave birth to have been influenced by that famine throughout their lives. 
In 2013, a group of researchers reviewed death records of hundreds of thousands of Dutch people born in the mid-1940s. They found that the people who had been in utero during the famine, known as the Dutch hunger winter cohort, died at a higher rate than people born afterward. They found a 10% increase in mortality after 68 years. Their study suggests that the Dutch hunger winter silenced certain genes in unborn children and that they have stayed quiet ever since. This study of the long-term gene control is called epigenics. Epigenics is the study of biological mechanisms that can switch genes on and off Recent epigenetic studies have shown that stress, socioeconomic deprivation, and other traumatic experiences of our ancestors can play a part in turning on or off certain genes in our DNA. So what is the answer for increasing health equity in Minnesota and across our nation? The National Quality Forum, NQF, is a not-for-profit, nonpartisan, membership-based organization that works to catalyze improvements in healthcare. The NQF was created in 1999 by a coalition of public and private sector leaders after the President's Advisory Commission on Consumer Protection and Quality in the Healthcare Industry. They concluded that an organization like NQF was needed to promote and ensure patient protections and healthcare quality through measurement and public reporting. The NQF created a roadmap for the U.S. healthcare system to reduce health and healthcare disparities through performance measurement and associated policy levers, focusing on selected conditions as case studies such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, and chronic kidney disease, infant mortality, low birth weight, and mental illness. This roadmap lays out four actions, prioritizing measures that can be helped to identify and monitor disparities, implementing evidence-based interventions to reduce disparities, investing in the development and use of measures to assess interventions that reduce those disparities, and providing incentives to reduce disparities. Advancing equity will mean improving both access to and quality of care. The committee also recognized that the use of effective interventions is just one facet in the achievement of equity. Collaboration and partnership with other sectors that influence the health of individuals, such as neighborhoods, transportation, housing and education, are also essential to realizing success. Music